How's it going guys? Today we're going to take a look at a pretty sweet piece here. This is the Yellow Hama F1. This is a pretty slick item here. Has a sheep's foot slash Warncliffe style blade. Entirely flat blade pretty much as far as the cutting edge is concerned. Pretty great edge too. Nothing to write home about, but entirely workable. Here we have a size comparison with your Spyderco Para 3. And your Benchmade Bug Out. So you can see it's relatively in that same size range as those two. Two kind of EDC standards as far as we're looking at size here. Uh, the blade length is a hair over three inches, so be aware of that when you are looking at this guy. The overall length is seven and one sixteenth inches, and the weight comes in at a whopping 4.1 ounces, so not a featherweight by any means, but it's not a brick in the pocket either, so totally pleasant to carry. Uh, speaking of carry, the pocket clip is a single position, right hand tip up only. So lefties, you're gonna have to go ahead and carry this in the right pocket or brave that left side blade exposed carry. Uh, totally viable, but not exactly the safest option. Uh, you will notice that this thumb wave, thumb stud, plate, whatever you wanna call it, is reversible. Uh, it did come on the right side of this knife, I decided to switch it to the left side, even though I am right-handed, and we'll talk about that in a second. Blade material on here is M390. You can see the blade marking right there above the frame. There it is, M390. And on the other side, we have the marking for the model number and the logo for the maker. And uh, you might be picking up on a theme here. Uh, we'll talk about the packaging in a bit, but that is definitely derivative of a fairly popular sci-fi thriller. One of my favorites as well. We have a partial backspacer here in the back, so a majoritively flow-through design, so you're not going to get any crap built up in there, really. Uh, this guy is using standard Torx hardware for the thumb stud, the hardware, and the clip, as well as the pivot. So... Nothing wrong there, you can go ahead and disassemble this thing, make sure it's all nice and clean, make sure it runs the way you want it. Uh, no proprietary hardware anywhere to be seen on this guy. We have a hexagonal lanyard hole, whether or not that also doubles as some sort of a hex bit driver, who knows, haven't tested that one out yet. This one is designed by Yellow Hama, it's a guy named Tony. He has an Instagram account. I'm going to post that down below. It is made by Best Tech Knives. Best Tech is a company out of China who is doing excellent work these days. They also make their own stuff, but this is a special piece. This blade is excellent. I very much enjoy this blade shape, as well as the finishing on this. We have a very, very thin behind the edge grind here as well as a stone wash on the grind itself and the swedge, as well as a pretty nice little machine satin finish on the flats. Like I said, it's a, a titanium frame lock. We have blue anodized titanium frame with a over travel stop and a steel insert you can see there just inside. The pocket clip is also in titanium. Now, as far as carry, this thing is nowhere near deep carry for two reasons. One, if we take a look at the pocket clip, you can see this is where you're going to stop. So you're going to have at least this sticking out of your pocket. So if that's an issue for you, keep that in mind. On top of that, I don't know if I have particularly thick pocket material, but I can't get this thing in my pocket past here without really having to work it. So another thing to consider when looking at this stuff. Speaking of where you can find these, the only place I can find these available online is on his Etsy store. 
Uh, he does have a link to it in his bio on Instagram, but I will also be posting a link to it down below in the description. Uh, these things go for about $220. That's right, $220 for an M390 blade and a titanium handle. Now, at a lot of places you're going to be spending somewhere around $300 for those, for those materials. I'd say this thing's worth the bones. If you've got the money to throw at it and you're into the styling, definitely worth the trip and worth the expenditure. Now, I had mentioned this over here on the left side, even though I'm right-handed. And you'll probably have noticed throughout this entire video, I've been flicking this open with my middle finger like that. The reason for that is this detent on this knife is incredibly finicky. If you add any additional pressure to this lock bar when you're trying to open this knife, there is no way it's going to open. And while that thumb stud is a very cool shape, it's also pretty brutal on the thumb if it's not going anywhere. It has an edge right here that feels a little bit like a knife edge when you're jamming your thumb into it over and over and trying to overcome an incredibly hard detent. So if you are right-handed, I would heavily suggest switching that thumb stud over to the left side and flicking it open, as opposed to trying to deploy it with your thumb. Overall, I think this is a great option. I think this is really cool. And there's one thing I have to talk about before. I talked about the styling of the knife itself. The packaging on this knife is fantastic as well. I am a huge fan of this series. I'm not going to name it, but you know what I'm talking about. This series right here is one of my favorite classic movies. Now, packaging should never be the deciding factor on purchasing anything, but I can understand it being a contributing factor on this one in particular. Thank you guys for checking this out. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you have anything else you'd like me to review, I'll go ahead and check them out if I can. If I have them in my collection, I'd be happy to share them with you. Absolutely. Thank you for stopping by. See you next time.